So hello guys and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm in the woods today, which can only mean one thing, and that is that we're doing a Forgotten Ponds video. Now, this is the, well, it was the first ever Forgotten Pond I ever sort of tried fishing, a uh, wild overgrown. I know it's got plenty of jack pike in, but I have also um, hooked, but lost, a real big pike. I think it was last year on the uh, Rapala x -Rap Otis, if you guys remember rightly. I'll insert the footage here. And um, so, yeah, we're out today, and I'm out doing a bit of dead baiting. Uh, it's been a bit tough around here recently. We've had loads of rain, rivers have been in flood, the little stream I've been wanting to fish has been completely flooded. So we decided to do some dead baiting on the Forgotten Pond and see what we can find. I'm sure we'll come across a few jack pike, but fingers crossed we might find a decent one too. But when it comes to these Forgotten Ponds, it's not always about the size of the fish you catch, it's about the adventure that you have doing it. As you can tell now, I'm just tra traipsing through loads of woodland and we're going to go find some water and fingers crossed put a few fish on the bank. <laughs> So guys, don't be deceived by the sunlight. We have just reached our first spot of the day and it is freezing. We've got 30 mile an hour winds and it is bitter. I think it's about, feels like minus one. So very, very chilly at the minute. We're gonna get some baits out there. We've got a nice margin, uh, which looks really good. It's deep, I can see it's probably about six foot plus deep. And there's snags down there, right down this near side margin. And the opposite margin on my right hand side is really shallow, only about two foot deep and it's quite deep in the middle. So what we're gonna do is work our way down the left-hand side where it's deeper first, in the snags, and then we're gonna work our way out into the open water, and then we're gonna pack up and move on. Probably spend a couple of hours in each swim. Right, let's crack on, get the rods out there, and fingers crossed, get some fish. Didn't even get a chance to cast my other rod out and it's gone, the first one's gone. Didn't even get a chance to cast it out. Oh, go for it. Yeah, we've got one, we've got one. First fish hooked. Did not have my drag set tight enough. Definitely not a big one. But first fish of this forgotten ponds saga we're doing today. Oh god, he's got me wrapped up in a bit of a tree here. They were definitely not a monster first fish of the session and I'm more than happy with that in fact I'm gonna chin him because both of the hooks are on the outside of the mouth or one hook rather should I say there's only one hook isn't there on that what a good start to the session and he is fat he's definitely feeding well I'll rest him in the net while I get the rods cast back out I'm glad I got my bait back so I'm gonna cast it straight back out <laughs> rig worked perfect I've been fishing for Five minutes maybe, maybe five minutes. <laughs> Just about to cast this bait out. Well actually cast it out now. Just a little smelt. So the action came very, very quickly on the other rod. Uh, within, well, less than 10 minutes. I could say possibly within five minutes. We'll cast this one just past that one, out into the open water, I think. There we go. What I like to do is when the baits have been still for so long, is just gently twitch them back. Most bait anglers will do this during the session, especially if you're on the float. <coughs> Essentially sinking and drawing. Just get a few turns of the reel and pull it a couple of feet, leave it a few seconds. Do the same again, pull it a couple of feet, leave it a few seconds. And sometimes it can just induce a take on the way in. Oh, it worked, it worked. A pike followed it all the way in and it just took the bait right at my feet, just there. I can't believe that. I actually say something's gonna happen and then it happened. Gently twitching and drawing the bait back. It worked. You can see the bait. I can see the fish with my bait, and I know it's not got that front hog, so I'll just give it a second. Oh, he's, he's going to spit it. Being a bit funny with it. He spat it. He spat the bait. <laughs> we did this clear water, and I could see what was going on there.
chance to back out after just clearing the weed off it. See if anything happens. It's definitely a bite, it just bopped under the water like that and then bopped again a little bit and then just sat still. So something definitely showed interest on that one. In fact, it's moving right now. It's pulling to the right. Yeah, there was a fish and it's taking it straight away as soon as I've cast back out. Can you see my float? It's just kiting off to the right now. Very slowly, but it's definitely a bite. No denying. I might just go for the strike. Might just be a small fish nibbling on it. Let's go for it. We got 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 it. Oh, he's come off. He got me snagged up. Well, swim number one has been productive. We have caught a pike, we lost a pike, and we've had like two drop runs, but it is in the path of the wind and the wind is getting stronger and it is freezing. So I'm gonna leave this swim now. I've been here for about two hours. I don't think there's any big fish here. I think the drop runs I've had in the run that I had in the margin uh, where the fish dropped the bait, they were only small fish. So we're gonna move around now, hopefully to a more sheltered area right in the trees and amongst these ponds. And fingers crossed we'll find some more fish and not get a frostbit. <laughs> Right, so we're at our next location, just, just around the corner from the spot I've just been in. And I think it's important to show you the rig that I'm using because it's super, super simple. The setups that I'm using today to catch these pike, anyone can do it. So the rod and reel uh, to begin with is the rod and reel you see me use for dead baiting and actually during some of my carp fishing sessions this year. Uh, the three pound test uh, carp spirit blacks. They're 10 foot, like I say, three pound test. They're perfect for setting the hook on pike with these bony mouths. Um, and then the reel is the Akuma Seymar bait feeder reels. And the one that I'm holding right now is one that is loaded with 60 pound braid. And that's because I've got one extra heavy setup for when I'm fishing close up to the trees and close up to the snaggy areas in this pond to be able to get my rig back if I was to get snagged up. And the other one's got, I think, 20 or 30 pound mono on. So the rig, like I say, is super, super simple. I'm fishing cigar floats mainly and these are pre-weighted which makes things even easier because we're going to be drifting floats around and drifting baits around we're not going to be fishing float ledger we're not going to be fishing baits on the bottom we're going to be moving around constantly and trying to find these fish so I'm fishing these with a small float stop above them on the braid and then at least down to the wire trace nothing else on the line whatsoever then we have the wire trace with my what I like to call a safety hooking rig it's not a double treble rig and it's not a single hook rig it's a bit of a hybrid of the two so we have a single hook um, above the the treble hook and that one is hooking to the back of the bait fish that I'm using. It acts as an anchor holding the bait in place and that hook isn't actually the one we intend on hooking into the pike, it's the treble hook that does that job. This one just acts as an anchor and the reason why I'm pointing them into the back of the bait fish is so that the bait fish sits horizontal under the water looking like perhaps a small bait fish that is withering around or dying, not necessarily a dead fish and that way we get to cover the water quite quickly and like I say it probably imitates more of a dying fish as opposed to a dead fish as it sits upright in the water. And all these forgotten ponds, they don't get pressures too much, so we don't need to be too critical with our setup. Just having a bait, drifting around, mid-water, is enough to get bites, as you've seen so far. So let's cast out again in the next room, and fingers crossed, get some more bike on the bank. got to a new spot I've literally just cast out it seems to be a bit of a theme on these sort of ponds it seems to get early bites and then it gets quiet but I've just cast out and I've just had a bite on the slightly bigger bait I've cast out although I might have dropped it I'm not so sure no we still got it let's go for it make sure it drags tight we got it we got it we got it yeah there we go. Who that had to be a fish here. Look at all the snags. We've got the tree branches, we've got the reeds. I've not even got the big camera set up because I've literally just cast these rods out. My god, he choked that bait. Slightly bigger than the first one we caught anyway. 
My God, he really did choke that bait. Ooh, let him have a little rest. Then we'll take a good look at him. Lovely, chunky, beautiful pike again there from this pond. Well, that was some fast action. The first swim I got to, I cast my first rod out, and before I could even get the second rod out, I had a fish. And then in this swim, I cast the first rod out, I cast the second rod out, and just when I was getting my big camera set up ready, uh, changing the GoPro battery, I looked over, and my floater had already gone. So you're talking five minutes yet again. Let's take a quick look at this fish before we get it unhooked. And I'll show you how, just how you eat that bait, because these fish really are savage in these forgotten ponds. <laughs> Absolutely choked it. And that was after striking fairly quickly as well. That's why I use these sort of fish safe rigs um, to be able to unhook these fish, to be able to ho hook into and unhook these fish. Makes it a bit easier. So I'll just quickly unhook him now. Really choked it. There we go, and that's unhooked. Now I often question what these forgotten ponds pike must be eating. Because I never ever see many bait fish in here, but obviously finding plenty of food because even though this is just a small jack pike look at how big his belly is obviously must be plenty of bait fish in here for him nice healthy dark fish beautiful yellow spots just like the first one these really are some stunning pike and i can't wait to catch a decent sized one <laughs> Right guys, now I know there's a pike down there somewhere because I have had a take but it dropped it. Now it was on the sink and draw, I've tried it a couple more times and it's not come back. But I'm thinking maybe it's after a bit of more of aggressive take or maybe a bit more of an aggressive retrieve might be able to get the bite. The float right now is currently sat there not moving at all. So the other rod I've decided to change over to just a single treble rig. So it's just a single treble uh, on the wire trace, nothing else up the line, completely free, free lined. I'm going to be chucking out there um, a small smelt. Um, and I'm going to see if that does the job, just sink and draw, twitching it back in, see if a bit more, more of an aggressive action might be able to get a take from the fish that dropped the last one. Right, let's see if we can get it. Yeah, we got to take, we got to take, it worked, it worked, it worked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was tangled up on the reeds in front of me for a second, so I was a bit uncertain about what had just happened, but yeah. Yes, twitching that bait back. I've drifted the bait around for a little while. Yeah, I had a take, but since then, nothing. And then twitching that bait back, we've now got a take. We'll see if that fish is actually taking it properly. I've only got a single hook in this bait. We've got it. Not the biggest fish in the world, but it might be the biggest one so far today. Oh, God. God damn, he's strong. God, don't get me snagged up. Whatever you do. Oh, now he's gone around all the reeds. We got it, we got it. Okay, he's not big, he's just very, very strong. These wild pike normally are. There's loads of fight in them. Yes, we got it. We got it, guys. Another pike from the Forgotten Ponds today. Definitely the biggest one so far. And if I do say so myself, not a bad one for this little Forgotten Pond. That single treble hook there, just on my smelt twitching rig. There we go. Take a better look at this fish. I think that was a perfect example of when something isn't going quite quite right with your swim, where well, you know there's at least one fish down there. Sometimes just changing what you're doing ever so slightly can get you a take. And this is an absolutely beautiful forgotten pond pike. Now this particular set of forgotten ponds, the average size pike in here is probably only about two pound. So to catch a fish of this size, which is probably about, I don't know, five, maybe a bit over five pound. It's actually a fantastic fish for this particular set of ponds. And I'm over the moon. Only got one or two more baits left. So we'll try in the next swim. 
and then I think it'll be time to head home. We've only been fishing maybe two and a half, three hours. Absolutely fantastic. It's freezing cold and I think it's about time we got home. Had a fantastic session, caught some beautiful pike. All these forgotten ponds fish are really are nice fish. They always seem to be quite dark with very, very vivid sort of spots and markings. Really cool fish to catch. And it's always about the adventure with these ponds. I didn't catch any monsters, but the pond seems different every time I come and visit. There's always some a new tree that's fallen or some brush that's died back and opened up a new area of the pond. And it really is great for exploring. So if you want to check out any of the gear I've used today, I'll leave it all in the description below. If you want to see some more videos from this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified in future when I get more videos up. I upload every sort of four to five days. If you like the video, don't forget to like it and I'll catch you guys later.